When an aircraft program is launched, the manufacturer must produce several prototypes in order to test various systems and ensure safe and reliable operation for the following models that enter commercial service. These prototypes undergo rigorous testing and are put through all sorts of challenging conditions, including extreme heat and cold. The plane has been dragged, dropped, soaked, forced to hover, shudder and flutter, Boeing said of its 747-8 testing. But after being stressed in all sorts of ways, what happens to these prototype units once the plane maker is finished with them? While an aircraft program might achieve all the necessary certification and mass production might commence, the prototype units may just continue as test aircraft. Data from planespotters.net indicates that many early models of well-known commercial aircraft became what are known as test beds, which the dictionary defines as, quote, a vehicle, such as an airplane, used for testing new equipment, such as engines or weapon systems. Thus, the teams at companies like Airbus and Boeing will often use their prototypes to continue the aircraft development process, looking for ways to improve systems further. The testbed may even be instrumental in developing the next family of aircraft. The first 747 was actually a testbed for developing the Boeing 777 engine program while the first A380 was used to develop the engines for the A350. An aircraft testbed in its most extreme form, this is how the National Air and Space Museum describes the Boeing 707's prototype 367-80 life. At one point, the Dash 80 carried three different engine types in its four nacelles. Serving as a testbed for the new 727, the Dash 80 was briefly equipped with a fifth engine mounted on the rear fuselage. Engineers also modified the wing and planform and contour to study the effects of different airfoil shapes. Usually, once the testbed phase is finished, the manufacturer will try to find a new home for the aircraft. The new home is typically at a museum, as we'll see with some example types. Let's first look at some Airbus prototypes. The very first A220, built as the C-Series CS100, is preserved at Toulouse. In January 2020, its fuselage was cut into sections and used for training and trade shows. The second A220, or CS100, however, is active as a testbed, as is the first CS300. While listed as scrapped, the first A300 was preserved in a way. Some parts are in Munich, while other parts are preserved at Toulouse and Paris Le Bourget. The first A320 flew as a testbed to develop further A320 enhancements, it was also used to test winglets. In 2019, it was moved to Aeroscopia in Toulouse. The first A340 was used as a testbed and demonstrator and was most recently used as Airbus's Laminar Flow Blade Test Demonstrator aircraft. It now sits stored in Tarbes, France. The first A350 continues flying as a testbed. The very first A380 is marked as a testbed that's currently stored at Toulouse. It should be noted that the second A380 MSN 002 was also used as a testbed for several years. Following this, it was preserved and moved to Aeroscopia in Toulouse. For Boeing aircraft, the prototype to the Boeing 707, the 367-80 Jet Transport, sits at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum at Washington Dulles. The very first 727-100 was delivered to United Airlines in 1963 but after its service life was moved to the Museum of Flight in Seattle. After flying as a Boeing testbed from 1967 to 1973, the first 737 became a flying laboratory with NASA. In 2003, it was installed at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. The first 747 was used as a testbed before preservation at the Museum of Flight in 2003. Data indicates that the first 757 is still active as a testbed. Unfortunately, it looks like the first 767 never had the honor of going to a museum. Built in 1981, the aircraft was stored at Victorville in 2003 before being scrapped. The first 777 was used as a demonstrator before serving with Cathay Pacific. In 2018, it found a final resting place at Tucson Pima Air and Space Museum. The first Boeing 787-8 was preserved in Nagoya on June 22, 2015 at the Flight of Dreams Complex, which opened in 2018. The second 787 built is on display at the Pima Air Museum in Arizona, while the third is at Seattle's Museum of Flight. As you can see by the history of each model, 
prototypes serve well past the entry into service of the aircraft type. From testing new engines to other flight systems experiments, prototypes can potentially fly for multiple decades. It looks like the best place to spot some of the first prototypes is in Arizona, Seattle, or Toulouse. Have you had the chance to see any of these for yourself? Let us know in the comments. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.